hate spelling cousins. You already know what time it is, and it ain't in a meeting for the stories, and it ain't in a meeting for the stories. Let's get right into it. Three true creepy neighbor horror stories. I like this one so I'm like, everybody has a creepy neighbor that, you know, <clears throat> hopefully not everyone had a creepy neighbor, but you know, if you do, you can relate. You know, I've watched a lot of spooky movies with a lot of creepy neighbors. I watch a lot of, um, well, I listen to a lot of, a lot of stuff that has and deal with, you know, creepy based people and all different types of stuff. So I was like, ooh, let's see what they're going to do. I think I did one other creepy neighbor and... It was like real bad. Like someone was looking inside the girl's window, like real bad. And he was like a criminal up on the streets, like bad. So let's get on into it. We're with our homies. I am our scary tales. Y'all know how it goes. Go over there and watch with them if you want to. And if not, it's fine because she's with me. Yeah. Other than that, go and like the video. I'll ask you something to subscribe throughout it. I mean, ask you something to comment throughout it and you should already be subscribed because we're family let's get on into it grab your blunts please grab your waters grab your blankets grab your bags of chips and grab your bottles of water make sure you're hydrated let's get into it my grandfather left me his old farmhouse before his death I always wanted a place like this, so as soon as I finished college, I came here to write my book. But the moment I stepped into my bedroom and I saw a huge, ugly bat hanging from my bedroom ceiling, no, I sir. called out to the housekeeper, Carmel. What is it, sir? You see Get that, that filthy thing. thing out of my room! I hate bats! Oh, oh that uh -uh. one! Boy, they all live in the cemetery behind the lake. Must have gotten in from the window. Telling Carmel to prepare Girl, my dinner, I went to freshen up. When I came back, I found that the bat was gone. Finally, what a relief. After gobbling two chicken help. legs and a bowl filled with noodles, I set out for an evening stroll. I took the path at the back of my house. After walking for seven minutes straight, I found the old cemetery Carmel mentioned in the afternoon. A pebbled paved path leads into the cemetery. The gravestones were quite old and had moss and wild saplings growing over them. I was reading the epitaphs on the grave when I heard footsteps behind me. You don't like bats, do you? How do you know? <laughs> I was nearby when you were telling your housekeeper to get rid of it. Oh, Boy, like I that. see. The man took off his big black hat and bowed his head like an English lord. Welcome to Blist's Hill. I'm your neighbor, Vincent Malfoy. Um, uh, I'm Joe. Vincent. I just moved here. Splendid! Finally a neighbor! <laughs> Seeing that it was getting dark, I slowly started walking towards the house. The man, too, followed me. I was no, feeling a bit uncomfortable sir, in his presence. In. The way he talked without blinking made me cringe. I do enjoy wandering around the church cemetery in the evening. <laughs> okay, I so nodded my head and tried to turn on my flashlight to get a clear view of the road. It blinked twice and then stopped working. Damn it! Don't worry, I can see very well in the dark. Uh, careful, there's a hole ahead. Vincent grabbed my hand and pulled me to his left. His touch was icy cold. I felt a shiver down my spine. Then, suddenly, he asked, What do you know about vampires? I wasn't Hi. ready for such an odd question, so it took some time to reply. Uh, blood-sucking bats are called vampire bats. I don't know if this bat exists in our country, though, but I have read about vampire bats in foreign books. Um... Also in ghost stories, it's said that when dead bodies come out of their graves to suck the blood of sleeping humans, they too are called vampires. <laughs> right. I felt annoyed by his question. For a few minutes, none of us talked and just kept walking on the dark road surrounded by woods. When I almost reached close to my house, the man suddenly said, 
It was a pleasure meeting you. How long you're Likewise. going to be here? Probably a month, or maybe more. Good, good, very good. <laughs> he then lifted his long bony finger and pointed out towards the cemetery, saying, You will see me if you come that way after sunset. My paternal grandfather's grave is also there. Tomorrow I will show you. Flashing his yellow teeth once again, he disappeared into the dark woods. A coyote howled from the distance just then. That night, I had a weird dream. It was about Vincent Malloy. I spent the entire afternoon working on my book. Around five in the evening, I went out for some fresh air. I had no wish to see Vincent, so I went the opposite way from the cemetery. But within five minutes, he caught up to me. Joe! Wait! Ah, damn it. I tried to walk away, but he was so quick. He stopped right in front of me, blocking my way. Did you sleep well last night? Why does he always ask the weirdest questions? I started walking, Hello. saying, Wait. Yes, I did. Good. <laughs> good, very good. I can't sleep at night. I sleep during the day and wander around all night. I see. The cemetery is my favorite place. I feel so fascinated to think about all the dead bodies buried here are sleeping for decades. But they don't enjoy being in a box. I often hear them weeping at night. All they want is to come out and be alive again. <laughs> I couldn't tolerate his useless rant anymore. Look, Voldemort, or whatever your name is, I have no time for your moronic bullcrap. So just leave me alone, okay? I went to my house and for one last time turned back to see if he was following me. He didn't. He just stood there with a cold, expressionless face. His eyes glowing in the dark. Once I got home, I laid down on my bed, thinking I'd had to tolerate this jackass neighbor for months now. I must have dozed off when a pair of wings flapped over my head. Opening my eyes, I saw a huge bat hanging from the ceiling, staring down at me. Its green, burning eyes made my skin crawl. Without taking my eyes off the creature, I reached for my hardbound notebook on the bedstand. Within two to three seconds, the bat jumped aiming for my throat, flashing its sharp fangs, and I hit it with all my strength. It flew away from the window, landing in the backyard. At the very next moment, I heard the sounds of rustling footsteps fading away. When I looked outside the window, I saw no one. The bat was nowhere to be found. The next morning, I woke up hearing chaos outside my house. Few local people were carrying Vincent Malloy oh. on their shoulders. Vincent's forehead was covered with clotted blood. When I asked what happened, one man said he might have fallen from the tree and cracked his head. What was he doing on a tree? This man is one crazy wacko. He loves climbing the tree and hanging upside down. Just like... Just, just like a bat. Y'all think he turned into a bat and got smacked, or you think he crazy? Hey guys, my name is Robert. My girlfriend and I live in a house in the woods, away from people. Hey, it may be that moving away from the world may be frowned upon by everyone, but if you had a neighbor like Willie the Stalker, you would understand me. When we moved in, we immediately met William, not because he showed up, but because both my girlfriend and I saw him spying on us from his house. Oh, the neighbors no. warned us that this man was in the neighborhood recently, and during that time he had terrorized the whole neighborhood. During the day, he only spied on people through the window, but at night, many said they saw him trying oh, to enter the neighbors' no. houses or approaching the children to talk to them. Oh, I was sure no. that this was all a lie, as my neighbors also mistreated me for no reason in my previous neighborhood. To remove my doubts, I went to say hello to William while my girlfriend was unpacking. When I rang his doorbell, a strange man appeared. I greeted him in a friendly manner, but my optimism faded rather quickly. The man didn't return my greeting. 
He just stared at me with a tetric look that stopped my heart. He was full of pent-up anger and looked like he was going to open the door and attack me at any moment. Uh, hello? My name is Robin. Yep. That didn't end well. After that, to the people that I decided there. to listen to the neighbors. Maybe this was a man I should not approach. But in the next few days, I could not prevent him from approaching us. For security reasons. On the same day we moved in, we installed a camera on the front door. The previous owner's door was broken for some reason. We finished with the move and settled for in. Some reason, but he's soon to after, I realized that something was wrong. The camera was in a different position. Someone had moved it. I went to look at the recordings and, terrified, we saw how Willie had been trying to break our cameras. I was furious, and even oh. though I let it go that day, I watched the next few days as the same thing happened, over and over again, until one day he broke the camera. That had been the straw that broke the camcorder's back. Furious, I went to knock on the neighbor's door and, unlike the previous time, this one opened by itself, and there was no one behind it. With some curiosity, I began to explore the dark house, inside? but I saw no one oh. nearby. I was struck by the fact that I saw many family pictures, but none of them was Willie. The lights could be turned on, but it would surely alert the man. I didn't know what I expected to find here. I knew this was trespassing, but I didn't care. I heard noises coming from the basement, so I went downstairs and began oh. hiding. I slowly oh, walked up the stairs there. to see what the sounds were. When I saw that. what was happening, I almost fell to the floor in terror. Boy, On the floor, chained together, were at least five people. All these people were naked, with their private parts covered by bandages. All the people were connected to each other as if they were a centipede. No, their mouths were cooked to the back of their bodies. This was sickening and horrible. It was just like that movie. There. Have you seen the human centipede, Robert? Behind me, my neighbor stood with a sickly but shy smile, proud of what he had done. Ooh. Isn't it beautiful? The movie inspired me to do this. The guy from the second movie was a rookie, but I am a doctor like the guy from the first movie. I can do this, and it's fascinating. Who are they? Oh, didn't you see the pictures on the way over? I'm not really your neighbor. They are. And you know what? You and your girlfriend will be next. Before the man could react or attack me, I began to beat him brutally. The Something dead. had taken over me. I hit him harder and harder until yep. I wasn't even yep. doing it in self-defense yep. anymore. Yep. The Dad people ass. trapped in the centipede seemed terrified of me. By the time I was done with him, he was dead. Still alert, I heard someone start to come down the stairs. Wasn't Willie alone? I stole his gun and stood waiting. The footsteps became louder and louder, each one echoing throughout my body. I was terrified but ready. As soon as I saw a silhouette, I fired as fast as I could, and a dead body fell down the stairs. Oh my god, it's your It was my girlfriend's. No, 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 no! What have I done?! That's Suddenly, I felt people. someone crawling behind me. When I turned around, it was William. The man was still trying to attack me with a small knife. Ah! Ah! Still He's desperate, I unloaded all of my anger on him. This was the second person I had killed that day. I couldn't go to jail. Not again. If I wanted to get out of this, I would have to get my hands even dirtier. Crying. I put the gun to the family's head, oh. and one by one, I began to execute them. I was aware that maybe they could be saved, but at that moment I lied to them, telling myself that I was doing them a favor. I buried the bodies in the backyard and wrapped my girlfriend's body in a bag and put it in the back of my car. What a we were twist. both going on one last trip. I grabbed the most important things and I went to my uncle's house in the woods. I originally wanted to go there. But my girlfriend didn't want to. I guess what she wants won't be a problem now. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm more and more amazed at how easy it is to kill. Remember how I told you before that my former neighbors judged me and treated me badly? Yeah. That was because I accidentally killed a teenager who wandered into our front yard. Oh. I made everyone think I shot him thinking that he was a thief. But the truth is, I knew what I was doing. Obviously. And I liked it. 
I love my girlfriend, but I didn't like her opinions on things, so maybe it was a good thing I accidentally killed her. Although, sometimes I wonder how accidental it was. Nowadays, we are both far from civilization. Oh, there are no more noisy neighbors body. or stalker like Willie to ruin our days. My relationship with her is better than ever. Wow, we hardly even argue anymore, anything. and we get along great. Who knew we just needed a little peace in our lives? Hardly. How you arguing with a dead body, I moved Robert? into my new neighborhood a few weeks ago. I thought it was a quiet street with kindly neighbors. Something That's that I twist. don't mind oh. in the least. Can I just say, I love a twist, y'all. Ugh, love a good twist. One thing I am are, one thing, you know, the homies that I am, ugh. One thing the homies at IMR gonna do is make sure they hit you with a, a good little twist. What? Going from going from the victim to the murderer in like a blink of an eye. Once he turned around and shot his girlfriend, he's just trigger happy. Just trigger happy. I moved into my new neighborhood a few weeks ago. I thought it was a quiet street with kindly neighbors. Something that I don't mind in the least. I wanted a quiet life, but something that happened a few days ago has seriously made me consider moving. It all started when I was unpacking my car when my next door neighbor came over to introduce himself. He was a tall, thin man with a squarish face and dark circles under his eyes. His brown hair was already graying and had a streak of white running through it. He seemed friendly enough, but I couldn't help but feel a little uneasy around him. Hello, neighbor. I noticed you're new here. You must be Jimmy, right? Yes, I am. How did you know? I oh, I'm on the board for the HOA and we always discuss our newcomers. Welcome to the neighborhood. I live right over there. I turned toward the house he was pointing toward, and the concern must have registered on my face because he began to talk again. Oh, sorry about the boarded up windows. I realize they're not that welcoming, but I'm getting some repairs done. Hey, I completely get that. Oh, we chatted for a little while more and he eventually invited me to dinner. He said he always invited new members of the HOA to dinner. I accepted his invitation to dinner, but I couldn't help but feel a little nervous. I didn't know this man too well, you and I didn't know what to, to expect. People. As I finished offloading my car, I glanced over at his house and felt a strange chill run down my spine. My neighbor sat on his porch, his eyes fixed on me as I worked. We made eye contact and he smiled. It seemed friendly enough, but something about it just didn't sit right with me. Still, I decided to go to dinner anyway. He was on the board of the HOA and I needed to make a good impression. When I arrived at his house, he greeted me at the door with a smile. He led me into his living room. Y'all remember that one video we watched where, um... They had went to the, uh, what was it, the neighborhood watch. They had went to the, uh, people's house that said that it was on the neighborhood watch. And then they went to, um, a friendly barbecue in the neighborhood. And then people said that we already got a neighborhood watch. Y'all remember that? And you just go into someone that said they on the, the HOA. When I arrived at his house, he greeted me at the door with a smile. He led me into his living room, which was decorated in a dark and macabre style. There were black curtains drawn over the boarded up windows and the only light came from a few candles on the coffee table. He offered me a seat on the couch and then he went into the kitchen to get dinner ready. I sat there alone, feeling increasingly uncomfortable. I, I could hear him it. banging around in the kitchen, but I waited politely for him to return. Finally, he came back into the living room with a plate of cheese and crackers. He set it down in front of me and then sat down across from me. I hope you like chicken. It should be done soon. Until then, here's some snacks. While eating the food, however, I began to feel a little dizzy and my eyes began he to close. What's going on? How do you drug cheese I woke up looking around desperately. I felt my head clearing and I began to realize what had just happened. Yeah, yeah, the low what? brick ceiling prevented me from seeing too far into the dim room, but I did see him. He stood there with a wide grin on his face as he stared at me. Let's play a game, shall we? What are you on about? Let me go! I will let you go, Jimmy. You just have to escape. I'll give you a three-minute head start. I wanted to tackle him to the ground, to fight him, 
but I noticed a long metal shovel in his hand and I thought better of it. Struggling to my feet, I began to run. I still felt a bit dizzy, but I managed to make my way up the stairs, lurching from side to side. One, two, three, four, five. I could hear him counting and it sent chills down my spine. I had to get out of here. Rushing toward the front door, I threw my body against it, but nothing happened. The door was bolted shut, and I already knew that the windows were still boarded up. Damn it! Damn it! I turned around desperately, oh, okay. looking for a way to escape. Oh. I could still hear him. Two minutes forty-five. Two minutes hey, forty-six. Two minutes 45. I stood already. there, frozen in fear. I could hear his footsteps now, and I knew that he had finished counting. My head was finally clear though, and I forced myself into action. I could see him coming out of the basement as I bolted for the stairs, heading upward. He held the shovel in his hands and ran toward me, a maniac smile on his face. I desperately ran up the stairs, dodging down one of the many hallways in the house. I could still hear him behind me, taunting me. Jimmy, come out! I know where you are! I threw open the door and climbed a flight of stairs. Suddenly, however, I saw the outside. I saw a window that hadn't been boarded up. I threw myself out the window in joy, but froze in my tracks when I realized where I was. I was on the roof of this three-story house, and I could hear him panting up the stairs behind me. Help! Help! Someone help me! The neighbor emerged from the window, his eyes glinting with malice as he approached me. Looks like this is the end, Jimmy! He walked toward me slowly, raising a shovel above his head. I cowered in fear, expecting him to bring it down at any second. Suddenly, however, the neighbor fell. He oh. tripped over a loose shingle, his hands flailing as he tried to grab the Some roof, damn but it was of no use. He fell plummeting downward as I bolted for the window. A few hours later, I managed to break out of the house and call the police. You might think this would be a happy ending, but I don't. The police never found his body. Apparently, he fell into one of the bushes around his house and managed to escape. Mm. What's worse is that last night, as I was going to bed, I saw something. I couldn't make out the face of the shadowy figure standing across the street, but I did see something else. He was holding a shovel. Uh-uh, boy, leave him alone. He beat ya. He said if he escaped, he gets to live. He escaped. Yo ass fell off the roof and hit a shingle. Like, don't be chasing people down after you made the bet. Oh. Two twists. I love a good twist. Well, the last one's twist. We knew it was coming. Because why would you go into someone's house that you just met just because they said that they was on the HOA? Why would you go to their house and they, you know, and it only be you and them? If it's supposed to be like a whole thing, why would it not be more people? You know, like, don't you think it would be you, him, the rest of the HOA, and a few other people of the, um, of the neighborhood? Just go into people's houses just because they said, come over to the house. And then he drugged you off of some damn, off of trees and crap. That was a new one for me. I ain't never seen nobody get drugged off cheese and crackers before. It was always something liquid. Now I gotta be worried of cheese and crackers because y'all putting the drugs in the cheese and the crackers? Is it the cheese? It gotta be the cheese, right? Because it can't be the crackers. What you gonna do? Rub it on the cracker? That's crazy. But I say number two was my favorite because the neighbor was creepy, talking shit about every, you know? The neighbor was creepy, staring at everybody. And then it had went into like the twist of the um, Spencer P movie. I don't know if you've seen that, but if you ever seen that, you only ever need to see it once. I seen I think each one once. There's like three movies, I believe. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. yeah, that and then this last one. What going from that and then the guy killing his girlfriend on accident, thinking he killed old boy. And then killing everybody. And then keeping her body. That was a good twist. Mm -mm -mm. But let me know your favorite in the comments. Like I said, mine's was two. And until next time, guys, I love you. Mm -hmm.